evening. Please welcome, yeah. well, well, please join me in the Pledge to the Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is the Selectman's meeting, April 6, 2015. And I'd like to introduce the board. Jim, Jim Waddell, Rusty Bridal, Town Manager Fred Welch, Mary Louise Wolseley, and Mr. Phil B. Tonight for public comment, anyone wishing public comment to speak? Seeing none, we'll move to announcements and community calendar. I got nothing. Nothing tonight. Mrs. Wolseley? I still have unmelted snow piles in my yard, but I'm hopeful. You'll find a lot of trash in there, I'm sure. Mr. Bean? No, sir. Thank you. And Mr. Waddell? Yes. Uh, opening day, Red Sox played and they won. Yeah. And I believe the Yankees lost. That's Aww. true. Spring's here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, on, uh, I believe it's this Thursday, <coughs> There's going to be a special uh, concert at the Congregational Church, um, and they have a special solist, solo, soloist that is plays many different instruments, and it's going to be a great event. I believe it's at 7 o'clock. Um, and everyone's welcome to come. The consent agenda... Tonight, the first, there are several 2015 veterans tax credits requalification. Number two is entertainment license and posted permit for Max Restaurant Group doing business as the world's greatest karaoke bar. Number three is one day entertainment license for Judy Healy, one Middle Pond Road. Number four is the MS2. 32 report of appropriations actually voted. Number five is barn pr preservation easement on Exeter Road, barn and shed. Approval of minutes for March 23rd, 2015. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I will move the consent agenda if I may. I'll second. <clears throat> All those in favor? Unanimous. Tonight for appointments, number one. Uh, minutes, Mr. Chairman. Oh. Minutes. You started them, but you didn't finish them. So I also move that we accept approve the minutes of March 23rd, with some corrections, if I can find one. I'll second. Give me a second. Too many papers. Ah. Apparently, I don't have them with me, so I'm not going to worry about it. It was minor. Did anyone else have any <coughs> changes? No. Seeing none, does anyone have a motion? Mr. I Bean? I moved the approval. Oh, okay. Can I get a second? Second, Mr. Bean. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. And first appointment tonight is Jay Diener. Please join us at the table. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Jeff. I'm here for a couple of reasons. The first is to talk to you about the Seabrook Hamptons Estuary Alliance, otherwise known as SHEA. Yes. It's an organization that we formed in 2013, and the purpose of the organization is to advocate for the protection and preservation of the Seabrook Hampton Estuary, otherwise known as Hampton Harbor, to most people. Um, we have worked with the UNH Cooperative Extension, New Hampshire Sea Grant, uh, people from Jackson Labs at UNH to last summer and fall orchestrate a series of workshops that some of you had attended um, that covered topics that range from um, various aspects of sea level rise, um, zoning and how it affects our three different communities. Um, the rise and fall of the salt marsh as it may be impacted by sea level rise, 
um, and even delving into some of the FEMA regulations and opportunities related to uh, floodplains. The organization would like to continue to advocate for the health and preservation of the estuary. We are organizing ourselves. Um, we are choosing three representatives from each, up to three representatives from each of the communities to serve on the board of the Seabrook Hamptons Estuary Alliance. Um, and I'm here tonight to ask for your support of the three people in Hampton who have raised their hands to, to be the advocates for our community as part of this organization. And they include Chris Munns, former state rep from Hampton, uh, Ray Ann Dione, who is our current conservation coordinator, um, and myself. Um, and again, we're, we're looking to advocate for the town. We will, as we did with the workshops, when there is an opportunity to do something that we think is going to benefit to the town, come to you to discuss it with you and get your approval to move forward with it. Um, we think this is something that our estuary has needed for some time. Um, and so we're excited to move forward with it, but we want to do so with your approval. So I'm here to ask for that for these three people who want to serve on this board. And I'll answer any questions that you may have about the alliance, what we do, how we do it. Well, tomorrow we're having a, uh, as part of our meeting that we're going to have tomorrow night, we're going to be discussing um, uh, different committees and exactly um, we're going to be coming up with some guidelines, and uh, I think that this is a good time that, you know, maybe we can uh, take this under advisement, and we're going to be, we'd like to have a better idea of exactly what all these different committees are doing. <coughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. So I think that this is probably a good time, but I... I myself would rather wait until after we've had this discussion tomorrow night and we'll see you know what the other board members say if, if I may this is this is not a town committee this is not a function of the Hampton government um, mm -hmm. this is if you will a non-governmental organization it's an independent group <clears throat> like I said we we don't necessarily represent the town we don't act um, on issues for the town we advocate for the town so we're a separate organization from certainly those committees, the Budget Committee, the Planning Board, um, the Energy Committee, the other committees that are a function of uh, Hampton's town government. So it's a little bit different than I think the groups that you're going to be discussing tomorrow evening. Well, part of our discussion tomorrow night is how <laughs> are we going, you know, exactly what is going to be happening at, you know, we would like to have some order of you know, what we're going to be doing with different groups like this, whether it's a committee or a commission or whatever. So I think it's, it will be really good if we take, you know, we're going to have this discussion tomorrow, and we will take this under advisement, and we'll, I'll open it up to the board members if they have any questions. Well, I think Jay, Jay does a good job on the Conservation Commission, and, 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 and you know, with Shay too. I remember some of the meetings last year, and uh, I've got no problem with it. <coughs> Mrs. Since this is not a quote town um, town committee, or mm -hmm. do you require any um, approval from the board of selectmen? If this is an independent, it's an independent organization. Yeah. We collectively, in trying to put together the organization and in organizing a board, thought it would be best if each of the, if the representatives from each of the towns went to their respective governments to ask for approval to do this. We want to, we want to have some recognition from the town for the advocacy work that we're going to be doing on behalf of the town. And again, it's, it's advocating for the town, it's not representing the town per se. Okay, so this is not a matter of who is doing the representing, the, the people who volunteer, and it's just a matter of <coughs> as a community want to have some citizens giving right. input. Right. We're not, we're not looking for funding. So um, it's not committee appointments? It's not committee appointments. Okay. I don't have any problem with it. Okay. Mr. Bean? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Jay, for coming in. I don't know uh, anything about the organization. Uh, I applaud you for the work you do. Um, 
and uh, the Conservation Commission. Uh, I don't know who else was interested in the organization. Uh, your letter here says tonight you don't have any promotional materials. I can write a description of the organization. I think the cart's before the horse before we start advocating non-governmental organizations. Uh, if it does uh, pass muster and uh, gains the merit of the board on full disclosure, uh, I myself personally would like to see a wider net and some more talent uh, in some of these organizations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Waddell. Yeah, thanks for coming in, Jay, and sure. uh, thanks for the work you do in protecting the estuary and stuff. I think that's really great. Um, you know, I, I, I support it. I support the, the three people. Appreciate it. Um, if I may respond to Mr. Bean. Yes. Um, what, what I can bring you is some of the literature that we created for some of the workshops that we um, orchestrated last year uh, with various other groups. Um, there have been some other people who have been involved in this effort, um, uh, specifically Ellen Gaithel, uh, Pete Tilton. Um, they have other obligations, other responsibilities, and have chosen not to participate on the board level within the organization. Um, we are talking about uh, putting together a board of advisors that will be a part of this group as well. Um, but that hasn't been done as of yet, but we are, to use Mr. Bean's words, looking to cast a broader net than just uh, the group of people who are going to be um, on the board of this group. Yeah, um, I um, did attend uh, <coughs> one of your meetings, and I you know, kept abreast of what was happening as best I could from the emails that were sent out. And, um, you know, I certainly don't <coughs> have any problem either. But we are going to try to, this is going to be sort of a, I think that the discussion we're going to have tomorrow may have some bearing on this. So, you know, we'll take this under advisement and we'll go from, you know, we'll continue on. And as things go on, if you want to keep us informed with exactly what's happening, we'll appreciate it. Okay. I've been sent an email uh, requesting that I attend your meeting tomorrow evening. So if you've got any questions for me at that time, I'll be happy to answer them as okay, well. Okay, great. Because, uh, you know, the. Um, Conservation Commission is definitely uh, one of the things that we'll be discussing, you know, and uh, so we appreciate it and we'll look, for, we'll look forward to your input. Okay. Thank you. Super. Do um, you want me to get up and come back or should I just move on to point number two? Um, yes. Okay. Hampton Handbook. Update. Sorry. Didn't mean to be flipped. Yeah. Um, I created the Hampton Handbook in 2008, um, that one right there, um, because there are a lot of people, and I was one of them, who didn't really understand the breadth and the depth of Hampton's government and how different groups, different committees interact with one another and how I, as a resident, if I wanted to avail myself of any services that any of these offered to me or to be in contact with them regarding any issues that I may have, how would I go about doing that? So I created that in 2008, and I thought it was a good exercise for me. Um, we printed 500 copies of that. <coughs> They've all been distributed, and it's on the town website, so I, I think it served a purpose for the town. Um, but it's been a while, and the town government has changed, so I'm just um, here to ask for your permission to update that yearbook, uh, that handbook, rather. Um, and. If you also think it's a good thing to do, the reason I'm asking for your help with this is because we will be in the process contacting the various committees and boards um, in town asking for their help in updating their sections and we'll need their support in making that happen if you want to go ahead with this. Okay. Mr. Welsh, would you like to uh, give us some information on what, how you feel about this? We uh, worked our way through the last uh, handbook and it worked out very well. I know the selectmen had uh, come on board and, and had uh, offered some assistance in printing, which was done. Um, Jay is right. We have distributed all of our copies, and uh, I think we have a few in the archives, and, and they're permanently there for, for people who want to come and look at them later on. Um, I think it's a good idea. It, it provided a lot of valuable information to residents in the community. Uh, probably things they didn't really think or know about, but if they had to have an answer to a question, they could look at the book or look online and see the book updated and um, get their get their problem solved. And I think it's been a help. And um, you feel that, um, that <coughs> be able to give some, make the different department 
heads available? Oh, department heads have always been very cooperative. They were very cooperative in this effort. Uh, everybody pitched Absolutely. in and helped. Uh, there wasn't a lot to do, but uh, except <coughs> Jay and his crew, uh, what each of the departments did and how they did it, and I think that came out very well. well. I remember it worked out very well in the, I was on the board at the time. Yep. Mr. Bridal. No, I think any time you can inform the public on, on what where they can go to get information about various departments and if they got a question I think it's great and I think uh, did a good job the last time I'm sure you'll do an excellent job again this time. We can only hope. This is Walt's lady. One of us is psychic because I had pulled this and put it in my carry sack to ask the board tonight about the possibility of an update. But you did a great job on that. It's good. It's a great way of educating the voters, educating people new to town. Very worthwhile effort, and you deserve a lot of credit for, for working on that and for, for being brave enough to volunteer again to update it. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Bean? No, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. And Mr. Waddell? Yeah, I've, I've read it, and it's great. It really helps people to know what they're doing. Is, has that become an official town document, or is that? The one we have, we now have currently is an official town okay. document. Okay. <coughs> so after, after Jay updates it, we would then vote on it, or is yes. that? Yes. Yeah, okay. should make it something official at that point okay, once so it's, it's done. Okay, official. Yeah. Okay, very just, good. Just so you know what I did last time was did a brief write-up. I sent it to all the department heads for their edits and approvals, and then once we got it all put together, I distributed it to the, to the selectmen for you folks to edit and, and or approve. So yes, it's going to have checks and balances all along the way. Okay, good. I, Excellent. I'm all for it. Great job. I can't remember exactly what we did, but I do believe we did do some um, some money towards it. The board did. Um, I went. think the board did. We also got some money from, I believe it, um, I believe it was Pierce Atwood, mm -hmm. the law firm, mm -hmm. um, and they helped to fund printing. And I think um, the town went through the state prison system, yes. who has a print shop, That's to great. get the document printed. Well. Yes. So, so I'll leave that that up that end of it up to you folks if you want to go forward Here's with that this. With, um, yeah. Front page. Yeah. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> what do you say about that, Mr. Welch? Well, uh, let's let's get it finished first. Sure. We'll worry about printing it once we get there and see what we've got available to do that. What resources we have. Thank you. Thank you oh. for all. It, I'm sorry, did. Mr. Chairman. It, it also references the Jeez. village district. Yeah. Here as well. So both Pierce Atwood and the village yep. district contributed. Good book. I, re I couldn't quite remember how it was funded, but I remember <coughs> it was creative and it seemed to work out well. Yep. Sure. So hopefully we'll be able to do something like that again. But uh, thank you. And you thank you for all that you do. I we appreciate it. Next on the agenda, we have Chief Sawyer, Police Department, Departmental Update. And Deputy Chief Hobbs. Mercy. Yeah. Bless your heart. Mercy, mercy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. What I'm just handing out is a summary just so we can go over it. If you have any questions, some of the uh, statistical stuff can get a little mundane, so I tried to break it down for you a little. Uh, let's start with the uh, department overview for the first quarter. Uh, it's been a little busy with some uh, personnel matters. And I'll go over that. Our current staffing level of full time is 34 sworn. On March 2nd, uh, Andy Jowell was promoted to the rank of sergeant, assigned to the patrol division, replacing uh, Dave Hobbs, who was promoted to deputy chief uh, in November. In November, uh, Shannon Feely was hired as a full time officer to fill that position when uh, Chief Sullivan left the ripple effect. And moving forward, she's going to graduate this Friday from the 166th uh, New Hampshire Police Academy. <coughs> uh, a group of us will be going up to attend that. Those are always great ceremonies. If you've never had the opportunity to go one, it's uh, pretty impressive to watch. Um, she will be coming back out into the patrol division and completing her field training uh, requirements during that first year of probation. We can move them around from schedule to schedule to acclimate her to the different aspects of the department. Which we'll, we'll do, we try to get them some uh, time with the school resource officers, the detectives, and the prosecution folks just to get them an idea of how things flow throughout the department. Uh, we, uh, Detective SRO Azarian will be finishing this year up at the Hampton Academy, and I have selected a replacement. I'm not going to announce that because I haven't had the chance to speak to the school folks. You'll see that on your, on your memo if I just hold it, ask you to hold that till tomorrow. I have not had a chance to speak with Principal O'Connor or the superintendent, but that, the name on there is the 
uh, folks, uh, personnel moving forward for that position. And we are also currently in the process of selecting a detective to replace a member that has been assigned to the DEA, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the DEA Tactical Diversion Task Force. If you remember, that was, uh, we entered into uh, negotiations with the DEA regarding the issues that we're having down uh, here in Hampton with the, the constant heroin problem. Originally, we were looking at the HIDA task force, but after speaking with them, this better suits our needs. It also keeps our detective closer in proximity. He'll be working out of an office in Portsmouth as opposed to Bedford, New Hampshire. I just think it's a, it was a better, uh, it's a better split of uh, assignments and costs, and it's identical to the other one, and keeps him closer and closer to home. So I thought that was a better option for the town to engage in. He should be leaving for that position within the next two weeks. They're just uh, busy trying to find the vehicle, computers, and other uh, equipment that the federal government provides for this <coughs> officer to be part of that task force. As soon as that stuff is up and running, he'll be gone, and we'll be making an assignment to detectives, and I want that to be, that appointment's going to be by April 17th, if I can get the interviews done in that time period. Any questions on the full-time personnel before we move forward? Mr. <coughs> Cradle? Nope. Mrs. Walsley? Yeah, Chief, if you just clarify for me. So the, the detective is going to be assigned to the DEA Portsmouth Tactical Division. Is no longer going to be employed by the Hampton Police Department. Yeah, he will be. Uh, he will be an employee alone? of the town. Oh. He's assigned to a task for force, okay. and these task forces are designed to bring collaboratively together federal, right. state, and local entities. Uh, we have a number of them that work in this area, combating particularly the heroin problem, but also the prescription uh, drug problem that we uh, okay. have. So he's still ours, but it's still a special ours, assignment. And basically what it is, it's a breakdown while he's working for this task force. He, okay. There's a number of benefits to the town. There's approximately $17,000 worth of overtime that the federal government will reimburse the town for <laughs> due to his work on that task force. Um, and the best way I've heard it put, whenever we have a, a drug case that we can utilize this, yep. we can bring him back and he comes with 12 of his new best friends uh, that are specialists Absolutely. in this environment to help us combat the problem. Um, additionally, not that I, I really look to this as a, a, uh, something that I want to do, but any anything that we get involved in, any cases where there are asset forfeitures, anything that's part <coughs> of that unit, the town of Hampton will get a portion of that as part of any of the work he's done on that case. So does that enhance, does that come in under the forfeiture fund? That would come in under the forfeiture fund if and when we were available. And this group, particular group, uh, has jurisdiction from southern Maine all the way down into Essex County, uh, Massachusetts, because they break these things up by region, yeah. and that's the region that this group has been designated. So this is the first time, we're, this is kind of a trial operation. This is the first time in the history of the Hampton Police Department that we've gone. We've had other members of task force, but only on a part-time mm -hmm. basis. Remember, we have a detective yep. that's part of the Internet Crimes Against yep. Children Task Force, but that's a part-time, should be full-time, but it's a part-time uh, assignment. Right. This is a full-time. He's going to be gone working for this task force unless I have a critical need for him to come back. This is exciting. It, it, it's something we have to do, considering the level of the problem. Uh, you'll see later in the report as part of activity. Mm -hmm. We've already had two uh, overdose deaths in the town of Hampton this quarter. Okay. And any time you can get money out of the feds, I congratulate you. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> And again, we have five applicants for the detective's position. I don't want to leave that open, so I want to move somebody into that office to continue working the case modes because you'll see from our activity, that's where a lot of uh, our efforts are really going, uh, is towards those investigative matters. Mr. Bean? No, sir. Thank you, Chief. And Thank Mr. you, Waddell? No, not right now. Part-time staffing levels, uh, as you remember, we are allowed to have up to 70 part-timers. Our current staffing level is 29. Mm -hmm. Okay, looking at the list of 29, <coughs> um, I anticipate we have just recently put out our letter for requests for their shift picks for the summer. Uh, as those are coming in, I, I anticipate a, at least a couple of either resignations or requests for leaves of absence. So that number is mm -hmm. going to go down uh, from what it is today. We do have eight part-time officer candidates currently attending the part-time academy. They should be coming out, I believe, in May. And then they would have another 100 hours of training to do uh, inside the department, including a field training portion where they go out and they train with uh, veteran officers and ride around, uh, just kind of get a lay of the land, as they say, in how the department operates. Uh, we've also moved forward based on the town meeting vote uh, with plans to conduct an academy during the summer months. Remember, this, this is going to be a group of people that we bring in. 
-hmm. to get their certification over the summer. They will not return to us to work until sometime in 2016. Uh, right now, we had a test process that we've identified five viable candidates we're going to move forward with. We ran a second test on Saturday, and based on the physical agility test, uh, pardon me, the written test, the physical agility test, and the oral boards we uh, conducted today, we're down to three <coughs> in that area. I don't know if we're going to have time to conduct another test to try to gain more candidates, so we, we may be moving forward with that eight. Uh, with the Academy and we also have uh, candidates from other <coughs> uh, from around the southern area of the state we are the satellite site for the New Hampshire Police Academy for the part-time Academy we're simulcast we're wired so there'll be an instructor in pocket to be simulcast and to us uh, I believe it's um, keen and little so hopefully that'll start up in June any questions on the part-time staff mr. Bridal nope Mrs. Wolseley. Just please get as many as you can. We're trying, ma'am. It's just uh, it, it's a difficult proposition today. Um, again, I think I've highlighted right now law enforcement is not a popular career choice for many people. And part-time, with so many full-time jobs available, trying to get people to come in part-time yeah. has been difficult. Um, I was looking at the roster the other day with the deputy, and one, one trait I've noticed is as soon as we hire them, they become very viable candidates for other agencies for full-time. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the class of 2014, we started with, I believe, 10. We're down to four. Class of 13, same thing. Class of 2012, it was a dozen. We're down to one. And if you go back to find the next most junior person, it's all the way back to the class of 2003. Wow. So we have a gap from 2012 to 2003 because we do a great job training our people and they're part-time employees. But when Manchester National State Police or, or an entity in Mass comes and comes knocking for a full-time job, it's hard for them to say no. Uh, so it's just a battle we're up against. Uh, we are considering coming forward with our budget uh, proposals in July with some alternatives to that to try to try to retain some of that <coughs> investment we're making in employees, and that will include a number of full-time positions we're going to request. Uh, but we're trying to be reasonable about that to what the taxpayers can absorb. Uh, but we just find that we're losing so much of our investment very quickly uh, with the part-time ranks. Comments, Mr. Bean. No, oh, sir. Thank you again, Chief and Deputy. Mr. Waddell. Yeah, my only comment is is the same thing. It's just going along with that that we got to protect that investment. And if there's another way to protect the investment, I'm sure you're looking at it. I'm looking at it, but it's it's hard for us to you know some people suggesting <coughs> contracts when you see departments. But the problem is is we're talking about a part-time person that when they go to Manchester, Manchester isn't hiring them because they're part-time certification. They're going to hire them. They have to send them to the police. Department. So trying to lock somebody in on a contract on a part-time certification is almost impossible to do. I'm not even sure whether it would be legal for us to do it or not. It's, it's a part, the liberty rights that are involved with a part-time employee as opposed to a full-time employee are completely, completely different. Right. So I don't think that's going to be an option for us. I am looking at it again, but our past research has shown us that, that that's not something we're going to be able to do. So we have to find another means to try to retain some of our investment in these personnel. And, and when you have eight down to three, is that? <laughs> no, I mean, is it? well, you got to remember that the process uh, is very encompassing for okay. the state of New Hampshire. We, you know, you come in, you take a written test. Uh, is we score the test right there. The minute you're done, we send you outside and we run you through the physical agility testing. Uh, the physical fitness is a huge issue in this country, and, and especially with some of the younger folks, they come in and we put right on our website. And when you look look on employment, it, it spells out what you have to do based <laughs> on Cooper standards. So you know before you walk in what the requirements are going to be, and the number of people that can't crank up 11 push-ups is, is, is <laughs> mind-numbing. Wow. Um, you know, and that's uh, it's a huge area. Beyond that, um, we do an oral board, give them some peripheral questions. Those automatic disqualifiers will come up that we can't move forward. After that, we really get intrusive, and we have to give them what's called a conditional offer of employment. That's before we do the polygraph, the psychological battery, mm -hmm. and a very in-depth background check. Um, and that costs money, and, it, and it's a lot to do to get people um, to that point where you want them. So the other towns that are hiring full-time, they look at that. When somebody walks and says, yeah, I've worked a summer or two in Hampton, they know we've done all that. Nashua PD, Manchester PD, they come down all the time. You know, They're looking for talent, and they don't want to lose somebody at the last second something pops up. Well, they know we've already done it. So chances of them losing all that investment at the last second before they swear somebody in 
is minimal when they hire somebody from Hampton. So it's it's great for us. We have great talent while they're here, but they don't. Obviously, you can see they don't stay long. Yeah, uh, they're, they're rotating through pretty quick. So. But the chief's saying is that we're too good at what we do. Yeah, I don't ever want to say that. I don't ever want to get you know, somebody suggested one time at a meeting that maybe we don't do such a good job training them, and I, I just you're going to pay on the other end with lawsuits if you don't train them in, in a manner that is uh, sufficient to handle the problems we deal with down, you know, juggling between this off season with a little town and then becoming a big city for 12 weeks of the year. This is a problem that we've had here for many, many years, yes. and it's been talked about many, many times. Now, how is that a small amount for, to get to this point compared to years in the past? Yeah, the numbers are dwindling every. Uh, well, you know, and again, keep in mind this is a national issue. It's not just regional or yeah. recruiting folks that are, are can meet standards to be police officers right now is, is critical. It's very difficult. Now you add on the fact that we hire part time first, and we historically have hired full timers from our part time ranks. If somebody's looking at part time in Hampton or full time in Manchester, they're probably going to opt to go to Manchester first if they can get in the door. They can't. They come to work for us. It, it's a nice resume item that you work for the Hampton Police Department. Oh yeah. Um, and the director Don Vidim has said, I don't think so jokingly, that part of the standard for being a New Hampshire police officer is at least working one summer in Hampton, um, because you learn a lot and you learn a lot fast. You can either you either sink or swim. And we're I hate to say it, but we're pretty ruthless about it. If you're not fitting in, you're gone. Yeah. We, if you can't handle it, we don't we don't hang on to you because it's a liability and it's a risk for everybody involved. <coughs> I think that is why the cream rises to the top and so many of our people go on to great careers with us but also elsewhere throughout the state. Thank you. Uh, moving on to activity, if there's no other questions on that. Um, this is a comparison to the uh, first quarter uh, from last year. Calls for service are up uh, 2 percent. Our arrests are down. DWI is down. Drug offenses are up. Mm. Okay. Incidents reported are down. Uh, offenses down as a whole, felonies are down, motor vehicles down, parking tickets up 200 percent. Okay, that is strictly indicative of the weather conditions that we were forced to uh, ticket and tow a lot of vehicles. The officers try to be reasonable with people. They get out, you know, during normal conditions, they'll go knock on the door before they ticket the car to try to give the person the opportunity to move the vehicle. Uh, with what we were up against this winter, we just couldn't do it. We had to ticket and tow as many cars as fast as we could due to the uh, snow removal operation. So, uh, and right below that, accidents are up 62% for this time of year. That's indicative of the weather issues. Talking about some of the other crime issues that are down, that's, I think, weather related also. You think about things like burglaries. This, with this kind of weather and having to deal with the snow, the, 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 cottage burglary industry we have down at the beach some winters is gone because they couldn't get through the snow. And it's easy for us to track them. When they get, they get stuck. Um, so I think that attributes to the water issues, but then when you look at the, uh, the drug offenses, they're up 21%. Okay, that's more of an indoor type of activity that we're dealing with, and we're getting called to a lot of, and we've had two heroin overdoses the first quarter, but we've had numerous other cases where, uh, highlighted in the press, where we're responding in you know, we, we get them before mm -hmm. it gets that bad, but it's still another an issue where we're dealing with the drug cases. Uh, the heroin epidemic is not going away, um, and we have to continue being vigilant towards that effort. <coughs> what about the um, DWIs? Are those uh, down because in the past you've had so much what was it, I believe, federal funding? Well, it's the federal funding, but I think really this year that's indicative of the weather because because we, we had great success this, this year. When we had the storms and we asked people to stay off the roads, they did. Um, it was it was great because normally we get, you know, sometimes we get some fools that will come down to watch the ocean, you know, as it's launching rocks up over the wall at the cars. You know, and it just this year it just seems like we didn't have that element uh, to the degree we usually experience. It just as fewer people out driving around with the snow operations, and I think if you check with some of the local business owners, uh, that their sale their sales are down on alcohol in the establishments are also way down for the, compared to last year. So you add that up, I think that's again another weather a climate issue. Uh, that my fear is as we get warmer, when we get that first warm day, at the end of April, beginning of May, everybody's coming out at once. Yeah. Um, I've already entered into uh, discussions with the state police and the sheriff's office that 
when we get one of those midweek days and it's hard for us to get people to come in because our part-time staff, they have full-time jobs elsewhere, we're already working on getting support from the uh, sheriff and from the state police yeah. so we can deal with those issues because it's going to happen. Uh, I think a lot of cabin fever is going to come out in the next several weeks and we have to be prepared for it. Uh, overall, the national based incident reporting system, these are how we report our statistics and how uh, the FBI categorizes them. Uh, group A crimes against persons are down. Group A crimes against property are down. Group A crimes against society are up, and that's corresponding to what you're seeing with the drug and alcohol issues. Group B crimes are down. That's the disorderly conduct, the lower end stuff that's down 15%. Again, I think that's a lot to do with whether people aren't out as much. We're not getting those calls for fights outside establishments like we normally would. Uh, it's just really kept that. The snow has helped in that area. It's kept our, our calls for service in those areas down. Um, just going over quick over operations. Do you reckon, what, do we, why oh, don't we ask sorry, if any there questions are any questions? questions? Mr. Bridal. No, I think, uh, as always, you guys do a great job. You know, the statistics are here. It was a lousy winter. People weren't going outside. A friend of mine's a beer distributor, and he, he tells me that it's down. That the beer for restaurants is down, but the home consumption is up. So, um, so but that's they're, so they're staying home. They like you said, they took they took notice to what you said and stayed off the streets. So, thank you, Mrs. Wolsey. Now that the snow banks are receding, are you finding any potential burglars thawing out in some of the snow banks? Um, no, unfortunately, <coughs> uh, yeah, as the snow banks recede, we're finding damage, and uh, you may have seen me on Channel 9 and the front <laughs> page of the Hampton Union. Um, it's just one of those things, things happen when you get that amount of snow and you have to deal with it, and I think we'll probably experience some of that as people start to come up to their properties. It's usually April and May that when yeah. people come up to open up the cottages, they find out they've had some, some squatters over the winter or something like yeah. that. Not to the degree we used to experience. But you still see some of it, uh, and that will start coming in as it warms up on the snow banks receive. I expect. Mr. Bean. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And gentlemen, again, uh, your report speaks to the uh, surge operations and just how challenging it is with personnel. Uh, again, uh, on the backs of, of Hampton operators, uh, firemen, police, uh, public works, um, and, and the tremendous effort we provide to the state. Uh, on state properties and uh, what a leadership challenge it is for you and what it is a challenge for taxpayers. So under uh, Mr. Welch's leadership, uh, you department heads and your men and women in all the departments do a great job. And, and you speak to that, your problem uh, with your challenge with keeping uh, recruits that become part-timers, that become eligible. Uh, it's very, very similar to the small towns and they experience the same challenge. Uh, they get it. They get on board with a smaller department or those 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 levels, those incipient early stages in their career, and then they move on. Uh, but Hampton is a great place to uh, uh, become a law enforcement professional to maintain uh, that that uh, career track as you have, Chief, as you have, Deputy, and uh, you can provide very well for your families, and uh, you can really make a mark. So thank you for your service, and uh, thanks for the great job. Thank you, Mr. Waddell. Yeah, the only. Uh, uh, yeah. Great report, you know, the, the drug offenses, that's, that's just, I mean, it's a terrible issue, and I know you guys are being very <coughs> proactive on it, and having somebody in the task force is great, and I think the state's being proactive, but I think it's something that, that every citizen has to take a, a responsibility for and responsibility for the kids and everybody else and try to, you know, make the, clean those things up because it just, it, it's a waste, a waste of humans. It's one of these things where I think people you know, they assume that what somebody's doing is private and it's, you know, it's one of those things where there's so much discussion about legalizing marijuana and other, other issues in, in society and it's just, I don't have, I could go either way on, on, on that uh, issue. The problem we have to consider though is what does it lead to? What other problems are we going to see in society and what message are we sending that it's acceptable? You know, they, they talk about um, issues being gateway drugs and all that and uh, again you can have that argument back and forth all day long it's not so much that it, it's where is the level of society where do they want that it's it, we can't build enough prisons to lock up <coughs> the number of people that are getting involved in these things it, it, it comes down to it's an addiction issue and we can keep enforcing it 
but it really it's really coming down it's a health crisis it, it, it's truly a health crisis in this country and in this region and it just doesn't seem like there's a lot of assets being thrown at it in that regard educationally or in the health they're, they're throwing it all at enforcement and that's just not on its own ever going to win that battle it's right. not going to i agree with you 100 percent and i you know i think we have to put more effort into that the, the education and it's and one of those things we have to speak with our folks in Congress and our, and our state reps that mm -hmm. you know, while I understand the mood is to cut 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 be careful what you're cutting you're going to pay on the other end right. um, and I think this is a great example that we have to do something with this and just being tough on crime isn't going to do it it's not going to do it uh, we've tried that it, it has not worked so you can see that at the local level and I'm sure the folks in DC can see it so that's my personal perspective on it mm -hmm. Moving on to uh, department department operations. operations, obviously with the snowfall we had, um, you know, during the actual storms and then the cleanup was uh, substantial, especially down in that beach area. Just uh, with the snow drifts, it was, it was anybody <laughs> that drove down there. I have never. I grew up in Hampton Beach since 1979. Lived to work there, and I have never seen anything like it. Um, I was around driving around one night. I, uh, I kind of posted my frustration one night on Facebook. I got a lot of you know comical comments. I got stuck in a snowbank myself trying to go down and deal with somebody that wanted to talk to the guy in charge. So I drove down the street and I got stuck. He was upset about the plow operation. So he was a nice guy. He came out. We had a great discussion uh, when he came out and I just explained it to him. They've been working for 30 hours. We'll, we'll do what we can do. And uh, he was very understanding at that point and even off to help dig me out. But I told him I had a, I had a wrecker on the way down there. But I just saw, sat there pondering. I just have never seen anything like this in my life down at that beach. Uh, the snowbanks, as you can see, are still pretty mountainous in certain locations, but the melt has been going pretty good. They are, they are coming down quickly, so I'm hopeful we have uh, a record rodeo coming up in May as I think one of our first events, so I'm hopeful that the, the snowbank will be gone for that one and the state park coming up pretty one. quick. Uh, we worked in that time period uh, over 500 hours above our regularly scheduled hours to uh, provide for ser emergency service, but also to protect our plow folks out there and shutting down roadways and rerouting traffic. Uh, it was an encompassing operation. Uh, former director and now Chris Jacobs uh, did a great job keeping us in the, in the uh, loop as to what they were doing so we could help provide for the safety down there. So it was a team effort, but uh, it took quite a bit. We don't have to go over the heroin issues again. We touched on that. Uh, we've already started some of our preseason uh, pre staffing. Uh, a lot of the businesses are starting to open up down at the beach on the weekends. We've have already had I think two or three shows at the <coughs> casino, uh, bringing in, you know, good-sized crowds, uh, bringing great quality acts in, but that brings also a lot of people in, and I think a number of our uh, restaurant and pubs are starting to open up also, so that's bringing a lot of people to the beach early, even though we have the snow banks. Again, I think people are just dying to get outside and get out and do something, and a lot of them have cho you know, choose Hampton to come to. So we have to augment our staffing based on historical things we see, weather and entertainment venues. And what they schedule, we have to bring some officers in and have to deal with that. Uh, we hope by the end of the month we're going to have our preseason meetings with the state police, the enforcement bureau, and the sheriffs uh, to coordinate our activities uh, as they relate to the beach operation, for the traffic flows we get out on 95, 101, and then coming in from the Seabrook side of the bridge. Uh, state police is a great asset. Sheriffs help us with a lot of the transport stuff and also with the liquor enforcement bureau. The enforcement end dealing with the uh, the liquor establishments to make sure they're conforming to statute. Uh, they come down and give us uh, folks to help us with that area. And then uh, probably last, uh, but I know it's going to cause some discussion, but I think we have to have this discussion. Due to the staffing levels and uh, budgetary considerations, uh, I've made the decision that our summer season is going to conclude on Labor Day, September 7th. If you recall, normally uh, since 2004. Uh, our season ended on the last day of Seafood Festival. I'm going back to the old criteria of ending it on Labor Day, uh, and vendors conducting events will be required to pay for the cost of officers necessary to work any of the events. I have had discussions with uh, the Village District uh, Commissioners, mm -hmm. also with uh, Doc Noel from uh, the Chamber of Commerce to let them know ahead of time so we can start working through the details of how we're going to make that work. Um, obviously some concern, it, it, it's funding um, that uh, they haven't been used to dealing with, but it's one of those things that within our staffing levels and with our budget, it's just not something I feel safe absorbing any further uh, than we've already done. So I'd 
be open to any questions or discussions on that issue. I'm sure you're going to, I already, I gave them a, a courtesy phone call today to let them know that was going to be a topic tonight. So I'm sure you'll probably be getting some phone calls uh, to discuss those matters as far as they relate to their events. Thank you. Mr. Bridal. No, I think uh, you've got to look at it as we have the default budget and stuff, the way ways you can still provide the best service for the, for the town and still follow in your budget. Have you heard anything from the, uh, from the state down on the seawall project down on uh, North Beach? Are we all set down there? They sent us uh, their time frame, and the area they're working in really doesn't have a whole lot of impact on the walking issues other than just that little section down on that end. Okay. Uh, so they've already set up and established their, their safety zone, so they're ready to start work. And I know they have a timetable of being out of there before Memorial Day, although they didn't keep it last year because they were able to get a lot done. Um, I suspect they'll probably try to get out of there before. <coughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bartle. I agree with you, Chief, on the season end. Good, good choice, Mr. Bean. No, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. I just bring to your attention to the board. Uh, I did speaking with the village district, particularly because they are a government entity on, unto mm -hmm. themselves. That uh, there is a provision under New Hampshire law uh, that you may consider in discussions with them. That it, under New Hampshire law, as the chief of police, um, I can direct the police details go into anything that's impacting safety or traffic flow. Uh, you as the board, though, are uh, by statute open to accept uh, appeals and waivers of those fees that go with that. Um, they may seem like we're splitting hairs when we, if we were to do something like that, but my big concern is my budgetary lines, staying within the parameters of my budget in overtime and trying to control that. If you were to consider something like that, when an officer works a detail, they're paid out of what we refer to as Fund 26, which is the, de the uh, revolving detail account. That officer would be paid out of that fund, and if you waived uh, said fees to, to whatever entity might appeal it, we would just absorb it out of that fund. That's where the, uh, when an officer works, there's a 30% admin fee mm -hmm. that goes towards retirement issues and then the overage into that and the paperwork that we use for anything that's detail related. Um, it could be absorbed out of that and I'd much prefer if we were going to do something to absorb it out of that as opposed to my, my salary lines. My salary lines are going to be very tight and very narrow based on a lot of factors this year but a lot of it's going to be, you know, we've already worked over 500 hours of unscheduled work uh, just to do the snow removal and as we move forward when I have uh, operational needs and I don't have that many part-timers to put out, you know, to schedule regularly towards that problem, that's going to result in overtime. There's no other way to get around it. So this year could be, if we have a warm, hot summer, there's going to be an expensive overtime this year uh, that may exceed what we have seen in the past, simply because I don't have the part-time assets to throw at it right now. So these are the measures I'm taking to try to make sure we stay within parameters of the budget. I think this board definitely appreciates, you know, your efforts that you're taking, and uh, we appreciate it. Mr. Waddell? Yeah, I just have a couple of things. Number one, you know, what you've already done, Chief, and I'm sure you'll continue to do, is to talk to those people who are going to have events and stuff, the vendors, yes. so that they're well aware that this is coming. And the other thing is, when you mentioned that about the fund and being creative in ways to help them, maybe so that it just doesn't hit them, bingo, you know. I, and I had a, a great talk with Doc Noel today to, to let him know, and, and I let him know months ago that this was a possibility. I didn't want to just hit anybody with it coming out the gate. Um, we're going to open up our operational plan and look at areas where we might be able to save a, a position here, position there. Our big thing is, is normally on something like the Seafood Fest where we, on a Friday or Saturday night, we'd have 20 to 25 officers scheduled as part of a regular shift, plus the detail officers. Mm -hmm. Well, that 20 to 25 officers isn't going to be there anymore. It's going to be the normal staffing of four to five. So how do I make up the difference and what number can I go to to be safe but not uh, overburden the vendor? And that's what I want to try to be fair with is not try to burn, overburden them with that amount. Um, I can probably do with a little bit less. I don't, I don't have to put it up to 20 to 25. I can, I can manage it. I just have to look at my peak times and look at the historical uh, data that tells me when that's going to be. Good. I mean, so we're going to work with them. We're not going to just – we could just impose it. We have that statutory authority. I, I don't intend on working with people that way. I've never worked that way with, with business people. Uh, I want to work with them. It's just one of those things that they, and I think most of them understand we're at difficult times with budgets, and I, I, I expect they're going to try to work with us. So, And then one other thing I had was, and you made a, a mention of it before about 
you know, that, it, that police work is not just about enforcement, but it's about relations. And we read about in the paper and everything a lot of problems around the country with, with you know, the relationships between the, the police and the public. And I think Hampton does a great job of that in training and stuff. With well, people. I appreciate that, and I agree with you. We're kind of a unique community where um, our base population is roughly 15,000. So we get a lot of folks that come from a lot of different places, and diversity is the name of the game, and you have to be able to deal with people on a manner where just you can't arrest everybody. You just can't. Those days are gone. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we try to find a way to manage and address issues without getting to the point of making an arrest if we can avoid it. Um, <coughs> so some of that is going to see our numbers driven down, but sometimes you know everybody used to look at how many arrests we made every year. That's not truly indicative of the work that uh, the men and women of Hampton PD do. Uh, it's being out, being present, and it's that perception and feeling of safety. And that's the one thing I wish I, I wish I could commission some type of study to be done on that because the commentary we're getting from people is overwhelmingly what a great job we do and how you know friendly the officers are and trying to help people out. I just don't know how to quanti you know, quantify that for you. Maybe some point we can. Maybe mm -hmm. get a college student to come in on as a part of a college product and uh, do a survey for us. Something like that might help us out. Just uh, find areas that we're doing great at, but maybe help us improve some of the areas we can work better on. So right. we're always open to it. Good. Thank you. It's been my, um, <clears throat> you know, in the years that I've been um, helping out at here at the Board of Selectmen, that the business community has always been willing to pay for what they need to pay for. And uh, I think that that's probably going to continue. I think they understand about the, um, you know, the default budget and how critical it is at this time. And I think that they're going to work with you just like they always have. And no, I think they all understand it. They, they, you know, we, you know, and again, I think the great thing is there's always dialogue. You know, when somebody has a problem, they're not afraid to call us and let us know what they're dealing with. You know, we tell we tell our guys that you know. This is just the key down there, and you know if we tried to enforce every regulation and every rule and every parking thing rigidly, nothing could get done. So when they people were trying to deliver something and they're a little bit on the roadway, we tell the guys park the cruiser behind them and sit there for 15 minutes and run the traffic around them. Mm -hmm. Find a way to make it work for people because we just we can't make it so it's unbearable for the business people or the residents uh, in the town. There's a lot of stuff to be done, and especially with the rough winter we had. There's going to be a lot of people trying to fix and repair and get ready for the season, and we have to work with them. We can't work against them. So, uh, and I feel that they 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 share the same thoughts with us. They're really trying to work with us, and we're gonna we'll come to a a satisfactory level of service uh, for these events that are outside of my schedule. It sounds like you're keeping the dialogue going, so that's great. Always talking. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? from any of the board members? Um, I do have one other item. Uh, one of the keynotes that is the training we always try to highlight uh, as to what our great success is, is the amount of training we bring into the community and the savings uh, for the taxpayer because we host the training. So I'm going to have the deputy highlight what we've accomplished over the last quarter and where we're going in the next quarter. Thank you. Good evening. Um, although typically it seems like we're coming up on our busy time for training, it's never really slow in our, um, in our world. Uh, regarding the training. So far in the first quarter we've been providing support to the police academy uh, for both the part-time and the full-time classes that the chief had spoken to. And a lot of this entails our in-house instructors in the firearms program and the def uh, defensive driving. Um, our in-house instructors go up and assist their staff uh, with their with their classes. Uh, so that's been a big, uh, big piece for us so far. We've sent a number of our officers, three officers, to a field training program uh, to get certified. So when these new officers come back to us, we can train them on our in-house policies, procedures, our, uh, our use of force uh, tools, and everything that we deal with in-house so they're more familiar and more comfortable out on the street. So that uh, has added to our field training officers. Uh, we've had a number of officers attend a drug interdiction class. That class in particular has been a reoccurring class that's been brought to our PD. Uh, it's taught by Connecticut State Troopers that have an a extensive amount of experience in that world and uh, has, has been very helpful for us. Uh, so we've had a number of officers that were able to attend that. Two of our detectives this past week just got back from a child homicide investigative class. Uh, this is a class that they were looking for for quite some time um, to help them in that 
in that, uh, with that investigative skill. Detective Gilroy, you've heard the chief speak of, uh, he's a member of the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. He just got back from a three-week school uh, covering network and intrusion response. Um, this class was in Alabama. Uh, it was paid for completely by the federal government. And upon his completion, what that did for us was it, it got us approximately $17,000 worth of equipment to include a, a MacBook Pro laptop, some network capture software, wireless adapter, and some other software to go with it. Uh, so it was a big advantage to him going down there for that. What that did for him, for really us and for Detective is it made him one of three officers in the state of New Hampshire that uh, the Secret Service will call should we have some sort of uh, network breach in the state of New Hampshire. So he's uh, really enhanced his skills and um, he, he's a very talented, uh, very talented detective. So in addition to that, he's scheduled I believe this week, Monday, Sunday or Monday, he flies back down to Alabama, again funded by the, the federal government to attend a two-week class on uh, Celebrite. Now what that is, it's a, a device that will allow us to gather uh, technology, gather evidence from any mobile device, iPhone, uh, <coughs> smartphones, iPads, laptops, computers. It helps us collect uh, and preserve evidence. It, that, that is becoming more involved in all of our, a number of our invest, uh, investigations. So upon completion of that, he's going to receive, we, we estimate about a $30,000 piece of equipment in the Celebrate machine itself. So more benefits with that come that typically he's the, he's the person that will do all this evidence gathering for us. Typically what he's been doing is he's been driving a Manchester PD, I believe Portsmouth PD, so he spends a lot of time away from our department to other places where he has this machine so he can bring get everything done that he needs. Now we're going to have it in-house. He's going to be able to train all of our staff as well as surrounding um, departments in that field so that it's going gonna, it's gonna to make, make it a lot more efficient for us in terms of gathering evidence from these devices. Um, moving into the second quarter, really into the spring here, we have DWI training coming up, being put on from the New Hampshire Attorney General's office as well as the County Attorney's office. New Hampshire Emergency Management and Homeland Security are conducting a basic radiological training at, at our facility. We have an evidence management class. We have two FBI leader classes that you've heard us speak of before. Um, it's a supervisory course as well as um, internal affairs course that uh, we'll be posting. And then really we it gets into our in-house training where we try to get geared up for the, the summer. All our part-time officers coming back, we get them qualified on the firearms program, all our requalifications for full-time officers as well. So it's a, bu a busy time in the spring alone for our own in-house instructors getting everybody back up to speed. Questions for the Deputy Chief? Mr. Bridal? All set, thank you. Well good. good report. No, sir. Thank you, Deputy. <coughs> okay. Thank you both for uh, coming in tonight. Oh, and I believe well, I have one other item for you. Truck. Um, oh, I'm sorry. A waiver of the purchase policy for the ACA. I believe I uh, provided a package for you. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the van we're looking for is one of those high sided mm -hmm. vans. And trying to find that. Uh, on the state bid index, they have the van, but they don't have the high side. So I can get the van for the price of <coughs> $21,533, but not equipped with the other items we need, like the medium to the mm -hmm. high or high side. Yeah. Those total costs, including that, <coughs> official $3,149, but the total package would be $25,422. I had Lieutenant Gidley. Uh, look around to see if we could find somebody that would give us the high side van at the state bid to avoid going through the bid process that we couldn't get that but they did give us the prices that you see and my belief is that if we tried to put this out to bid we're not going to beat the price as the van of the bid price plus the additional cost we're not going to beat that um, so I am seeking a waiver of the bidding 
the uh, sealed bid portion of the purchasing policy. Mr. Chairman, I move that we authorize a waiver from the purchase policy uh, for and allow for the purchase of a 2015 Ford Transit in the amount of 25,422 uh, per the purchase order requisition dated 24 uh, March 15 by Lieutenant Gidley. I'll second. second. Uh, I'd like to hear what uh, Mr. Welch uh, has to say about this. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Irwin Motors is a state certified uh, seller <laughs> on a state contract basis. I seriously doubt you could acquire this equipment for any, any less cost. So we have a first and a second. And any comment? I have this is we'll I, uh, what I think the Warren article was thirty-seven thousand up to thirty-seven thousand. That's my recollection. I believe that, so. Yes, but that inc also includes some of the other equipment we're going to purchase to equip it with. Right. But that's what, what I was looking at. Your totals here and the and the options that you've got with the top. You will. You have enough money in the thirty-seven thousand to get everything you need for that vehicle. I believe so. Okay. Because I just don't want to see. Like sometimes in the past, you know, you have to get it and then you have to add on and whatever. So you're going to get the whole thing. Pete's a pretty creative guy. If you've seen some of the oh, things he's rigged up to uh, help us deal with the animal problems, I think that's, that, that number of the 37 that was on the Warren article is going to be I just want to make sure you've got everything you need for that particular vehicle. You won't have to replace it for another 10 years. No, because we're not going to buy, we're not plowing with it. We're not going to be doing some of the rough and tumble stuff that we had people Good. in with the truck. Um, we're not going to have any blue lights on it. The markings are not going to be police mm -hmm. markings. They're going to be town of Hampton animal control Good. because with the current state of things in society today, yep. if they're not carry, if they're not a sworn member carrying a firearm, then they're not going to have anything on it that says police. Yeah. And Good. Just trying to protect him also. This is for four-legged animals only. Um. Well, I can't think. And with with Pete, you never know. With you know, with some of the stuff he comes across out there. That have wings. Been <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, Thank you very how much. Old was the other truck? Well, that was a 2004. 2004. Um, that we years. had the, we had the gas tank fell off of it last year. <laughs> the, the entire <laughs> back end was replaced. Sure. And the problem when we get vehicles that work down there, when we get to that 10 year mark, we've had three in my career in Hampton that we've deadlined. They were in good operating condition, but the frames rusted. And there's nothing you can do for it. When the frame rusts, you're done. There's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. um, so and I don't want to get to that point where we wait for Pete to be driving down the road mm -hmm. and something to go, he turns one way and the truck keeps going a different way. Um, mm -hmm. Just <laughs> trying to get to that point, we don't have those problems. Any so. other discussion? Nope. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you for coming in tonight. Thank we you. appreciate it. Great job. Great report. Next on the agenda, we have the acting chief, Ayat, and he's got three people with a team. Yeah. Yes. A team. A team. <coughs> Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much for allowing us to come in and speak in front of you again, Mr. Chairman. Um, tonight on my team, I have Ms. Mrs. Stephanie Walsh and I have Deputy Kennedy, who you've seen in the past. Mrs. Stephanie Welsh is our newest uh, member. She came on board February 9th. Yes, ma'am. Yes, no, I remember when yep. you announced her. Yes. Right. She's Secretary. our fire prevention secretary. She's a part time employee. There you go. <coughs> Tonight I'll be speaking about the fire prevention processes mm -hmm. that we have going on. Uh, um, first, I'd like to outline some of the changes that we have in the Fire Prevention Bureau. As I stated, Ms. Stephanie Welsh, she comes in and she's working part time as our fire prevention secretary. She comes to us with a history of managing a health care office and has a remarkable skill in office management, and I can attest to it. With her assistance, we have reorganized the office space and are working on recreating some of the processes I'll talk about tonight. She's been instrumental in drafting new, drafting new documents and um, making the application process much more user-friendly. We've uncovered significant inefficiencies. We were once reactive, and that's the nature of a firefighter. People call us when they need us. We put on the lights and the sirens, and we respond very quickly, of course, with caution and due regard for Chief Sawyer's concerns. So <laughs> we've now enacted a change in the Fire Prevention Bureau, and we have become proactive. To that end, we've streamlined many processes. Um, we are now in, in the assembly <coughs> area, one month in advance. We're notifying the clients when they have an expiration date. We request that they send in an application along with all of the documentation necessary for us. If it's a place that has a hood that needs an inspection, as an example, 
fire alarms or fi or fire sprinklers. They have an inspection process they have to do yearly. They send us that documentation. Um, we are creating checklists for all of our customers <laughs> so that they can identify what they need in advance. And if they haven't supplied it, it's visible to them. Well, this is the one I'm missing. Previously, that wasn't the case. Um, we've had a problem, and I'm not going to lie to you, in achieving timelines. I know that um, Selectman Bean has made this known. There have been numerous public complaints about timelines. So we've done a real poor job in this area, and I recognize that. Processes in the Fire Prevention Office took too long. At times, they felt glacial. We have enacted change that's brought about a significantly reduced time by acting on and identifying the needs of the customer. We re recognize the deficiencies. Again, the checklist will be helping with that. Uh, if there's paperwork or reports missing, uh, we're maintaining communication. Stephanie's been calling them directly to say, hey, this is missing, and we need to have that supplied. Um, she's also called directly to vendors and to um, agencies. So if there was a known agency in the past that had provided us a report, if the building owner didn't re um, respond in a timely fashion and provide it, she's actually contacted the agency, and very often we've had a couple of times where they've sent it in, correct? Um, she's also calling the customers to remind them of outstanding paperwork, so they're getting that to us. Our customer service has improved greatly by having her in the office. Uh, she's greeting customers at the window. We now have a face so that when people walk in, they're able to see our business office as well. Uh, we're scheduling activity as soon as the pertinent documentation arrives, which is a change. Uh, we accept all electronic submissions, email and fax. Previously, this was not the case. We still accept hard copy as well, so people are coming to the Prevention Bureau to deliver it. We've instituted a new document, and I believe you have that in front of you. Um, this helps us visualize what's remaining as outstanding work. Previously, we had no means to track open projects. Uh, when we look at this document now, we can see what's open, we can see what's completed. On the opens, there's a comment section that you can see. It lets us know where we stand. So if there's a problem with documentation, we'll go after that one aggressively. If we're waiting for them to perform the work, that's in the comment. So we know that triggers a time or a date when we'll have to call them again. The prevention office is affected by being dependent on one person. No contingencies were in place to perform the tasks necessary in the absence of that one person. Currently our FPO is on medical leave and Deputy Kennedy has been doing the lion's share of the inspections. Thank you, sir. The job requires a certain level of training to perform. Uh, we are working to change that as well. We have several members that are attending an upcoming fire inspector class. Um, this job, uh, we're building the bench, okay? Uh, no coach worth his salt would be one member deep on any position on the team. So we're working to diversify our workforce and bring forward uh, more people who are trained. If and when we receive a customer complaint, we're taking action that resolves the issue directly. Uh, some of these come in second and third hand, so we're working to identify the source so that I can personally call them and identify the problems that they're having and work about to bring an acceptable solution. I'm working to craft the language in a document that can be supplied to all of our customers and that will clearly outline what type of services will be needed based upon the type of work that they're performing. We're trying to make things more consistent. We're aiming to make our operations more consistent by giving this, um, this feel to them. When they walk in, they're able to look at the document and say, oh, well, I'm going to do X. We're going to have commercial with residential above. We're going to need to satisfy these requirements. Um, we're also very much more responsive to our customers' needs, and I'm very confident that the business community will experience these changes. Some have already. As uh, my <coughs> counterpart in building, Mr. Schultz, has said, the beach is waking up, and I'm sure that many more customers will experience this. Um, I feel that with inspections or permitting or just our business office in general with the fire department, they're going to be very satisfied with the result. I'll answer any questions you have. Yeah, this is very impressive, and it's long overdue. Of all the boards I've been on, this has been a problem. And uh, I'm sure that this board will be supporting all, you know, all three of you and your whole department. This is really impressive. Um, Thank you, sir. Yeah, really impressive. Mr. Star Bridal. of the show right here, I'll tell you. Yeah, well, <laughs> she, it's going to be hard to live up to all that, but I, it looks <coughs> like you're doing it. And uh, This is a great start, James. You've got an old, a good hand with uh, Deputy Kennedy also. I certainly do. This is, a, this is a great start, and I knew Stephanie, when she got in there, she would, she's, I've known Stephanie a long time. She does a good job, so I'm sure she's doing a wonderful job. Fantastic. There. I couldn't be more pleased. And, and it's good to hear that you guys are out doing some of these inspections, too, so that 
so that they, they can get done in a timely manner. So Absolutely. thank you for that. Mrs. Wolsey. Welcome, Stephanie. We needed you. This has brightened up my entire year. Great <laughs> job. Really great job. And, and as the chairman said, long overdue, but this is wonderful getting ourselves on track. Perfect. Great. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chief, Sir? Deputy Chief, yeah. Stephanie Welch, uh, welcome aboard, Stephanie. I happened to personally stop by the fire department. Uh, at the suggestion of Mr. Welch last week and, and uh, happened to observe the customer service that uh, Stephanie was providing and uh, this is a breath of fresh air. It is key to business. It is key to uh, the perception of public service. It is key to uh, the, re the reputation of the, the outstanding and scintillating caliber of the firemen that serve Hampton. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. sir. And Mr. Waddell. And Ditto on everything everybody else has said. I mean, thanks a lot. I mean, Stephanie, welcome. This really looks good. And I love what you say, being proactive rather than reactive, because reactive never works. It just ends up with complaints. And, and you know, this report looks great. I think businesses will really appreciate it. Good luck. I hope it all keeps going. Thank you, sir. Thank I'll, you. I'll let you know. Yeah. Oh, one more quick thought. Will we be getting, like, quarterly reports uh, out of the FPO office, do you think? Is, uh, do you plan to make this? I, we can know, certainly make that happen yeah. if that's what you request. Yeah. Well, it's the best of the boy. I think <coughs> it would be nice if we could get maybe quarterly In reports. addition to when I come and see you, you want them oh, to well, be delivered whatever. electronically? Is that all right? Whatever. Well, whatever. This is an example. Just to, just to um, tell you what this is, this is an example, and obviously you see different versions. Uh -huh. We're still in draft stage with a couple of them. Okay. But what this is, is it's giving us an, an opportunity to see right. what's open. What have we completed? What right. date was it completed? Some of these are going back mm -hmm. a significant length yeah. of time. One of the things, and, and Mr. Welch has certainly informed me, that you know there are certain statutory requirements on making sure that we accomplish oh, yeah. part of our tasks, not the least of which is depositing money yeah. in a you know, trustworthy yeah. manner and doing it so mm -hmm. in a timely manner. So we're working on that, genuinely getting this done yeah. um, as rapidly as possible. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking when you get a format that you're comfortable with, yes, that you're working with all the time, I think it would be nice for us to be able to see the flow Absolutely. quarterly. Yeah, Absolutely. we can do that. I would love to uh, be able to follow like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll make that happen. Yeah, this has been the, um, I would have to say, in the 11 years that I've been selecting, this has been probably the biggest problem. And it's also the, the problem that seemed that nothing was happening for so long. So I appreciate everything mm -hmm. that you yep. all are Good. doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a Thanks great for night. coming in today. Good evening. Absolutely. Thank you. Ne I want to, um, the next we're going to have the town manage manager's report, but I just thought of something that we should have done at um, announcements in the community calendar. We should really have a moment of silence for Maury Friedman. Oh, yes. He, I didn't realize he passed away. I only heard it yesterday. A week um, ago. He died, a, you know, a week ago. 26th. And uh, he was elected, you know, he has done so much all through the years, and this year he was elected, and it's, yeah. it's a shame, really. So join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. And I wanted to say one other thing that I, that person that's going to be at the First Congregational Church is Jeff Warner. He and the church is sponsoring that event and they're looking forward to people coming. What event? Good. The event of, he's a soloist and he plays many oh, instruments. Oh, I'm music. not really quite um, sure. Okay. <clears throat> but I know it's going to be a nice thing. And again, it's going to be on Thursday, April 9th at 7 o'clock. Hmm. Town Manager's report, Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, I'm pleased to announce that the bids for the High Street Lafayette Road drainage project have been released through our engineers. Bids are due back uh, April 29th. We've also released the bids for paving, uh, shimming and paving uh, Exeter Road. Those are due back, I believe, the 17th. Uh, and that includes uh, the few streets that we had on uh, um, off of Route 1 that, that need to be paved. We've been sitting there for a couple of years waiting Fairfield. for the, the Fairfield and Belmont, Belmont Ruth. And, 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 Ruth. and Ruth. And those, those will be done at the same time. Those bids are out. They're coming back. Uh, we will have another set of bids for fall paving mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right after the seafood festival, so we'll be able to complete up the rest of the roads this year. All those funds will be expended. We're also uh, 
sort of a sidelight here. We're also uh, putting together a patching program uh, as far as uh, uh, sealing cracks in the roadways. Uh, we're getting more and more and more and more and more of those, and some of them are getting fairly large, like <coughs> Route 1. We need to seal those. We need to protect the road base in order to, to uh, relieve us of having to uh, rebuild some of our roads. So uh, we're working actively on that project. Uh, and patching operations for town roads are underway. Uh, please be careful to avoid potholes. Uh, they have greatly multiplied due to some terrible winter weather we've had, a little bit of quick freezing and thawing and, and some, uh, some things we didn't really want to participate in, but they're here, so we have to <coughs> endure them. Uh, the letter to the governor has been replied to, and I have thanked them for their return, the information. Uh, the governor's letter indicated that she had applied for a greater period of time for a recovery of funds, but the request was denied by the president through FEMA. FEMA was therefore uh, only the only designated recovery period was January 26th through January 28th, basically two plow days. Uh, the denial has been appealed by the governor as we understand it, and uh, we're awaiting some response from the the White House as to, and FEMA as to what uh, the president makes a decision on here. Um, and I might add that, of course, the only uh, declaration from New Hampshire was for that period. Uh, the other states have, have sort of bypassed that, and, and uh, they did receive approval for a longer period of time, even though declarations in some cases were not made. So we're working to try to get through that process, and we're keeping in touch with uh, with our friends in Concord to see what can be done. Um, I just want to let folks know that we're all going to be here at 7.15 tomorrow night to uh, talk to the boards, committees, and department heads about the board would like to set their goals for the coming year. <coughs> and uh, we should be able to work our way through that process, we hope, and uh, get that done in short order. Um, we have had a, uh, a lot of work going on within the town the last few weeks. Um, we have responded to the regional director of uh, FEMA Region 1 and have put pressure on them to uh, seek the presidential approval in addition to going to the governor's office and having that done there. <coughs> uh, you asked me for uh, the information with regards to a piece of property in Ashworth Avenue that has been uh, supposedly uh, going to be placed in the market soon, and I have... I've given you those, those copies of those assessor's records. Uh, we have received a letter from uh, the Seacoast Science Center. As you'll remember, a year ago, the, uh, the, the uh, aquarium in Boston was relieved of their duty with regards to the seal problems along the seacoast. Uh, that was transferred to the uh, Marine uh, Mammal Rescue Team on uh, uh, the Seacoast Science Center uh, for one year. They've gone through their trial period, and, um, and they were very responsive to our needs in Hampton. We had 27 cases here last year. Um, they were so responsive uh, to the seacoast of cities and towns that the federal government has, in fact, given them a three-year extension on their contract. So we should see some great improvement and, and further improvement in the work that we're doing. Uh, and it's, it, it's, it's somewhat important <coughs> that we, we get that approval done. So um, with that, I believe... That's it. All the rest of the stuff is for tomorrow morning's yeah. meeting with the department heads. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Question for the town manager, Mr. Bridal. Nothing. Mrs. Wolseley. Um, Fred, as you and I discussed briefly, uh, not just the condition of the roads, but the condition of the shoulders of the road, because where the shoulders are deteriorating, it's causing the roads to, to. To turn or to start breaking down on the edges, which is even worse. Do we have any hope of addressing uh, maintenance or or something of the shoulders of the roads? I have asked the Public Works Department to look at that. I can tell you there's very little in the way of funding. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that uh, unfortunately, uh, our current cost for the snow removal this year was five hundred and nine thousand one hundred and sixty five dollars uh, and the budget was one hundred and forty six thousand yeah. uh, dollars that's a lot of difference um, we're going to uh, have to find a way to replenish those that, that cash uh, that does not include all the money from the fire department and the police department for work that they did uh, it does not include fuel costs for everybody um, and it certainly does not include 
uh, damages that were the result of the snow removal because the snow was so heavy and so deep uh, that no, when you when you did try to move it, it, it did cause some subsidiary damage to properties. And we're currently going through the list of that and filing claims with regards to that. Um, we're looking at how that can be done <coughs> and whether or not we have the funds to do it, and hopefully we'll be able to get some of it done. I just can't tell you how much. I'm just looking for it. It's going to cost us more the longer the shoulders of the roads are not maintained. All of this is going to cost more. I don't know where we're going to come out in the end. Um, is there is there now or will there be um, a policy in public works where if vehicles are sidelined because it basically costs more to repair them than they're worth, are, are we doing, are we identifying vehicles that are no longer really viable? I believe we currently have two that are sidelined um, because of extensive uh, age wear, deterioration, and, and, uh, and needed repairs. Uh, and both those vehicles have been basically determined to be non viable as far as the town is concerned. We're going through them. Of course, you know, last month was inspection month. Mm -hmm. We went through and looked at all the vehicles from the standpoint of whether or not they could pass inspection. Mm -hmm. Two of them could not. Mm -hmm. uh, and frankly, we don't have the funds available at the moment unless we can answer some problems with the mm -hmm. snow removal uh, to, to repair them. So they have, been, they have been deadlined. One may be fixed and put back on because it's a one-ton dump, and we, we work out of those with our employees on the road every day because of the height of the vehicle. It's easier to work out of that size vehicle than it is to work out of a regular dump truck. So we're looking to try to fix that if it's possible, uh, but it's not cheap to fix it. So yeah. right now it's deadlined. And one of these days, I hope we can get together with Director Jacobs and do a, a complete review of that rolling stock list. Finally, um, I don't remember the time frame. It seems to me it was not several years ago, at least, when there was a discussion of replacing or augmenting the air handling system at the wastewater treatment plant. Do you have any recollection of? We did do a study, a preliminary <coughs> study on that. Yep. Um, and uh, as a matter of fact, the director and I uh, have been talking uh, in the last few days uh, about uh, working that up so that we can present it to the board and make a determination <coughs> that it could be presented to the town. There is a very high acidic uh, level of, of air quality in the, in the wastewater treatment plant. Um, <coughs> if you put a brand new penny exposed in the open within 24 hours, it's, it's, it's completely deteriorated to the point where you can see it's a penny, <coughs> but it's no longer new. It's well worn at that point in time from the acidity, acidity in the air. So <coughs> yes, we're looking to correct some of those problems and bring something to the board later on. Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Bean. I have no questions. Thank you. Thank Mr. You, Welch. And Mr. Waddell. Yes, just very quickly, I'll sound like a broken record, but on the high street thing, we're just going to make sure we keep businesses informed of the progress, what's going on, how the detours are going to run, so that there's no surprises down as, there. As soon as we get bids in, we'll know whether or not we have funds to do the project. Uh, obviously, uh, we conditioned that warrant article so that if the bids come in in excess of the amount of appropriation and the federal monies, then the project will not be done. Okay. So we'll notify everybody of that. Hopefully that doesn't happen and we can get this project accomplished. Uh, we have outlined some periods of time when this must be accomplished, certainly during the non-peak <laughs> months of the year. So uh, it may very well be, depending upon mobilization costs and times and so forth that, that the vendors pr present, uh, that we may not be doing this until fall. And then we will be coming up with a schedule, hopefully with the state, uh, to avoid large trucking through town because it's going to be a bear on, uh, on Route 1 to, to get this project done out there. So yes, uh, in answer to your question, we're also thinking of doing some of the work at night to try to lower the threshold of paying for the businesses open during the day. Okay. And the other thing is, uh, Mary Louise uh, alluded, it to, alluded to it, um, the, the roads. I mean, we've got to come up with, uh, you know, a program for the roads and how we're going to attack it. You know, the long range and the major projects, you know, you read every place nationally, New Hampshire, the amount of deteriorated roads, deteriorated bridges, and it, it, as she said, it's just, it costs us more if we don't do it, to, you know, the longer we put it off. So, I mean, a good long-range plan is going to have to be developed. We are working on an immediate six-year plan now for paving and rehabilitation. 
Uh, part of that is crack sealing. Part of that is uh, is uh, overlays. Part of that is partial reconstruction. Uh, one of the things that I've been Form public works on is that when you do the roads, one of the problems we have in the town is we have reflective cracking. So we put a brand new pavement surface down, and in three or four years, the old cracks that were underneath it come right through the new pavement. We're looking at using a geotextile to stop that reflective cracking through the pavement, which will give us longer life in the roadways. So we're looking at several different things that we could do. Amongst that, uh, those those processes, we're looking at not digging up the roads to place the sewers. We're looking at slip lining them, if it's feasible. There are some areas where it's not feasible. Uh, for instance, down the beach and the west side streets, those are probably going to have to be excavated simply because of the depth of the sewer, which is much too shallow, and the size of the pipe and its deteriorated condition that we probably would not be able to line them. So we've got a lot of programs and process here. Um, the new director is, is working very hard at that. Uh, he's also looking at our sidewalks. He's also looking at some of the other functions that we do in roadways, curbings and so forth, and drainage, um, as well as sewer. And we're trying to do a comprehensive program so that we can solve some of the acute problems that we have. If we can get rid of some of those problems, then we can save some of the roadways we have. I think that uh, for those folks who frequently go down King's Highway, particularly after it's rained heavy, mm -hmm. uh, you can see that we have... Uh, sort of a municipal swimming pool in a few of the sections of the roadway. We're working on a little inventive uh, engineering to uh, solve that problem without having to dig up the entire road and replace it. So uh, we're looking to try to save the money while we're trying to do the work. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, I um, met this week uh, with the Hampton Area Commission um, the, uh, con uh, the governor's consul, Chris oh, yes. Sununu. Right. Um, and, you know, we were talking about, you know, Ocean Boulevard and trying to keep the fire on, mm -hmm. to keep it in the 10 year plan, which it yeah. is, there's talk or it has been taken out of the 10 year plan. Sure. And, um, and he's going to try to help and, you know, get something going there. But, the bridge alone, I believe, was forty million dollars, which isn't something that you know, we're looking for. Ocean Boulevard. The bridge alone is forty million dollars, and I guess they estimate now what was at one time they talked about twelve million dollars. It seems to be seventeen million dollars for Ocean Boulevard. And um, rec this weekend, I went away and I was in Connecticut, and I was driving through there and. You know, this isn't a problem that's just unique for here. You no. can tell by just driving through Connecticut, the bridges look awful. They look yeah. worse than the ones around here. The, you know, the bridges that just go over uh, the highways that, you know, it looks like it's really in tough shape. And I was watching the news there, and I'm not quite sure if this figure is right, but I think they said it was $100 billion is the, uh, that they're facing there. They have to replace the viaduct that goes through Hartford, Connecticut. Ooh which, you know, it's amazing. And uh, in the, they were talking about how they're going to have to have probably uh, tolls and this and that. And this is a problem that's faced all over the United States. So it's something that we just can't, we have to pay attention to something before things really get much worse than they are today. There's no question about that, and I, and I don't disagree with you. Uh, the bridge in Hampton Beach, I believe, is number 12 or 13 on the red list which means it's the 12th or 13th worst bridge in the state, uh, which means it needs to be replaced fairly soon, and I believe they have it in a long-range plan for the next few years to replace that. As you know, they're replacing the one out on the interstate now where the Taylor River goes underneath the, uh, the interstate, uh, Interstate 95. Uh, that one's, I think, number 22. So we have two bridges that are very high, and the, the category is unsafe. Uh, Ocean Boulevard, we'd love to see it redone. Uh, there are significant problems there for the town as well as the state, and we have, we're prepared to work with them to make proposals that they need to do, but they also need to work with us um, because they intend to give us all their drainage, and we're not set up to take it unless we have additional uh, outfalls for that drainage in the marsh, and they've already told us we cannot have them. They're just going to put it in our system. 
So um, we need to work that out, and I'm sure we can work it out. But if it doesn't get worked out, they probably are not going to redo Ocean Boulevard mm -hmm. until it does, because it won't work until it does, unless they're going to pump the water into the Atlantic directly. I wouldn't encourage that terribly. It's not a good idea. That was the idea of, I believe, George Ball or one of the people that were there yeah. at one time. But, uh, you know, it's a, a problem that ne really needs to be addressed. We need to work hard at it. Thank you. Going on to new business. Number one is committee reappointment process. Did you want to well, Mr. That Chairman, up? we realize that you have a number of committees that you appoint during the course of every year. And vacancies that occur in those committees and <clears throat> what we wanted to do is we wanted and this is probably a good question for tomorrow night as opposed for tonight but I think you need to you need to think about the process we put this on here because you haven't gotten to that point in time of doing the re reappointments because of tomorrow night's meeting on the goals but I think you need to identify whether or not you need all the committees you've got or whether you need more committees than you've got and and you need to look at what they do and how they do it and and whether or not that really brings a benefit to the community so mm -hmm. um, one of the things that that I've always found in government is that uh, committee work becomes fairly stagnant if you don't sort of re-energize it every once in a while so I guess from our standpoint as, as, as daily employees in the town we'd like you to uh, to find a way to rejuvenate the system okay. and and make it make it so it's more responsive to the needs of the community so that we can get more done because we need their direction in many areas. Mr. Bridal. All set. Mrs. Wolseley. I agree with you. Good. Good thinking. Mr. Bean. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I enthusiastically support uh, re energizing um, yep. the re energizing re concept. <laughs> and uh, along those lines, uh, and, and very importantly so, is we have committee assignments here as, as board members. And as I am now on the budget committee, uh, and then alternate to the planning board. I'll be coming up to speed on what Jim does with the planning board as the member. But as the budget committee, if uh, the, I respectfully request, uh, if uh, board members have uh, interest in any department as the uh, that relates to the budget committee, that they would naturally go through me. And I think that makes it uh, uh, expeditious in terms of receiving or imparting information, but also. Uh, this snowstorm this year took a lot of wind out of the sails, out of our budget, and it also uh, exasperated and exhausted our employees. And uh, they were a little tired, and we're ready to surge again in what could be a matter of weeks. So uh, in terms of uh, inspections and tours and taking department head time, uh, I think those lines of communication are important. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I just happened to uh, see the budget committee meeting uh, in full of the last few days, and you're going to have your hands full. Thank you, sir. It's going to be it's a job. That, it's a big job, and you're the perfect person to take. Thank it you, on. sir. Appreciate Thank it. You. I'm Mr. all Waddell. set, and I, I agree. Let's re-energize re everybody. Look, his hair turned white from where he was. Thank you. Um, any new business, Mr. Bridal? No new business. Mrs. Wolseley? Nope. Mr. Sir. Bean and Mr. Nope. Waddell. Moving on to old business. Number one is the Board of Selectmen's meeting schedule, 2015 summer schedule. And I have a comment on that. If okay, you well, we're going to. Um, whenever you're ready. Yeah. Let's see here. Mr. Um, let's go over. I had it right here. Let's see. Is there anything different on this than what was done? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, it's exactly the same as last year. This is we usually around the time of snow melt <laughs> put this question on the agenda so the board has an opportunity to, to think about what they're going to do for the summertime and whether or not they want to continue the every, every other week schedule. Okay, Mr. Bridal, how do you feel about that? I, uh, I think it worked well last year. Uh, I think uh, we got everything done that we needed to do, and uh, I recommend we do it again this year. Okay. I second that motion. I'm Mrs. Wolseley. As I'm looking at this, this takes, with holidays and non-meetings, it takes 11 
Monday nights off our schedule, we have, I think, a really, really full plate this year. We have a lot of things to work on uh, in preparation for next year's budget and also with functioning this year. I would suggest, and I know nobody agrees with me on working right through the summer, but if we could agree to take those two no meetings in June off and then just leave the, the every other Monday for July and August, uh, I would appreciate it because I still think we have a lot of work to do as a board. I think it's, it's not right to take so much time off from attending to the business of the town. And don't forget, the manager's going to want department heads, budgets, and so forth into us by August, I think, Fred, in that time, rough time frame. And we're going to need to get special money articles beaten together <coughs> by October. I've already got about 20. The time frame is, is pretty compacted. Yeah. And time flies, as somebody smart said. So I, I would appreciate it if you would give us some consideration to at least meeting every Monday in June and then get your, you know, the days off in July and August as stipulated. Can we do a compromise? And how do you feel, Mr. Bean? Uh, there's an attachment that's been uh, provided in our package for the meeting tonight. Mr. Bridal has spoken to it. I support it if it requires a motion, and that was one. I, I have seconded, and uh, uh, that's how I stand. Thank you, sir. Mr. Waddell. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to say I support this attachment here and I think stands. I think if if it comes to the point that we need a meeting we can call a meeting Correct. and I think that's I think last year we got our work done and I think we can get our work done again and I think if if, if we're not then we can call a meeting and so I, I I leave that option out that options always open so that's my feeling and I would just like to say that um, it's always worked out very well and that's what we've done it on the boards that I've been on. I haven't seen anyone uh, turn down a meeting or wanting to be part of a meeting when the opportunity was necessary. Um, so we have a first and we have a second. Any other further discussion? All those in favor <coughs> of? I'm opposed. One opposed. Thank you. Any old business, Mr. Bridal? No old business. Mrs. Wilson? Oh. No, sir. Thank you. And Mr. Waddell? No. Nope. And I have none either. So we're going to return to recessed public hearings of February 23rd for Lot B for the continuation should the need arise. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Could I just... Uh, um, I wanted to ask uh, about the, uh, on that Westport Motel, how many square feet is that? I'll look it up. I don't see it on the page. I must be looking at it differently. The back page. Back page. It's the back page. How back many, page. How many? No, I didn't see it on the back page. Maybe I, is there more than one page? Yeah. Uh, yes. I only have one. You can probably find it a heck of a lot faster than I can. I only have the one. <coughs> I got both. Um, 3,900 square feet in the larger building. They cut off a lot of the smaller building. I think it's only a couple hundred square feet. Yeah, there was a small building here. The yeah. lot itself, though, how big is it? Is it 5,000 square feet? We're not 6248. 60, yeah. So it's just a little bit bigger than that. Red box for <laughs> <laughs> yeah, A standard lot is 5,000 square feet. Okay. Right. At the beach, yeah. <coughs> so, a little bit bigger. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the February 23rd, we conducted a public hearing on the various petitions relating to Stowcroft Drive extension. Uh, the council who were involved were given approximately a month's time to file written submissions answering some of the board's questions, which they did. 
and then they were then given to April 1 to uh, file responses to each other's responses, this following the track that's generally used in a court hearing. And uh, we had indicated and is required by statute that when there is a petition for layout before acting upon that, the board would need to schedule a view of the premises involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had done this, you may recall, Mr. Chairman, when there was a layout over uh, the road leading to the uh, uh, public works. Uh, and uh, that, in fact, was done at that time. Uh, in this case, we've had an impediment, major impediment, of course, with the weather going out to view the little lot B at the end of Stowcroft Drive and also the lot behind it, which we've seen pictures of. <coughs> um, my suggestion to you, uh, uh, having talked with the town manager about this, is that we schedule a view <laughs> for the afternoon of Monday, uh, two weeks hence, of uh, the 20th of April, and then the board that <laughs> evening at its meeting of uh, that regular public meeting could uh, deliberate concerning uh, the petitions, having had time to review the submissions of the attorneys. <coughs> this would be a note, the, the public, the view itself would be a public meeting, mm -hmm. although you're not obviously taking, uh, taking testimony. Questions, Mr. Bridal. What time are you looking to do it on, on that day? Well, Fred, we were talking about two o'clock. Two o'clock, three o'clock. Got okay, no problem. Um, so this would be on Monday, uh, April twentieth. <coughs> um, yes. That's correct. Just before your meeting that evening. So it'd be fresh in your mind when you got there. Okay. Uh, this is. Better wear your boots. I mean that literally. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bean. All in. And Mr. Waddell. Yeah, I'm all in. I was down there today. I just took a ride by there, and that lot B is, is clear of snow. Behind it, there's still snow, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but lot B itself was clear of snow. Okay. So. Two o'clock. Three o'clock. Two. I think three would be better. Three o'clock. Three. Thank you. Is that good with everybody? Okay. <coughs> we'll send notice to the uh, parties and post that that would occur at that time. Okay. And that's uh, no need to uh, go any further on that agenda item if that's all right, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I, I would suggest uh, before the board adjourns, and, and not that it adjourn, but that there be a motion um, under RSA 91A colon three, Roman two, small c and e, to go into a non-public session uh, to discuss matters which may affect the reputation of persons and also uh, to discuss um, uh, negotiation of litigation matters. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay. All those in favor? And Aye. that would be a roll call vote. Aye. 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 Um, Mr. Chairman, I would suggest that you make the notation that the uh, recess public hearing uh, with regards to the Stowcroft Road, the layout of Lot B as a, as a public way, uh, be continued from today until uh, further call of the board so that this notation will remain in the, in the agenda. Oops. Um, you need a motion I, We that. need a motion I will to that so move. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Moving on to, um, do you have your? That, that's, that's it, it for me. Okay, Thank you. I just wanted, to, uh, I, as a closing comment, I wanted to ask a question too. It just reminded me of it. Sir. Um, that I had some people asking me about the house that's out near the water tower. I, I guess it's collapsed. The root parts of it have collapsed. Uh, you know that. Yeah, I, I know the house you're referring to. What's yeah. the story on that? I. I can't give you a story on it, but I'll try to find out tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah, that is a mess. And report that to the board. I believe that the person who lived there is deceased. Mm -hmm. That's what I had heard. 
but I don't know what the status is, and I'll try to find out tomorrow morning for you. And is that the person that owned it? Yes. Yeah. If they're not out of there. <laughs> it's in bad shape. Well, it's been in bad shape for quite a while. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, great. So we'll, we'll check on that, that for you tomorrow morning. Thank you. Yeah. Any other closing comments? Do we have a motion for adjournment? If or you want to recess. Or recess, yeah. I'm Thank you. Move to recess. I'll second. All those in favor? <coughs> Aye. Thank you.